Welcome to this very special unit about one of the newest HubSpot features. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into Commerce Hub. So without further ado, let's get started. Just a quick agenda. First, we're going to take a peek at what this thing is called Commerce Hub. Then we're going to dissect the individual components of Commerce Hub, the invoicing, the payments, the subscriptions. Finally, we'll spend some time talking about best practices in HubSpot with Commerce Hub. As a really quick overview for those of you taking the full course, today we're doing the eighth part of onboarding where we're looking at setting up Hub-specific features. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. What is Commerce Hub? Well, as I record this, it's one of the newest HubSpot features that was very recently announced at Inbound 2023. Commerce Hub's a collection of three objects in HubSpot that allow you to streamline your deal to revenue process. Essentially, it allows you to handle some, not all, but some accounting style functionality directly in HubSpot. When a deal is closed and won, traditionally, you would get the deal orders to an accounting system, then create the invoice and accept payment in this separate system. Unless you're using an integration to get the data into the accounting system, this could cause significant delays and efficiencies in the process. The deal information needs to get to the accounting team. It may sit on a desk or in an inbox for a while. Then again, without an integration, it's entered by hand. It needs to be checked for accuracy. And then finally, an invoice can be created. Well, Commerce Hub allows you to take the data from the existing deal in HubSpot to generate an invoice directly in HubSpot, adding stunning efficiencies to the process. Now, not to sound like an infomercial, but wait, there's more. Not only can you now create the invoice in HubSpot, you can also accept the payment in HubSpot by utilizing Commerce Hub. Then, as we all know, a CRM is only as powerful as the data you feed it. Since invoices and payments are being processed through HubSpot, you can easily see and report on all of this data now to speed up payments and increase revenue. Sounds pretty cool, right? So in the shiny new HubSpot feature, you may recognize some of the components that allow you to create the new record types. You're probably already familiar with quotes, payment links, and the products library. Before Commerce Hub existed, you could add products to a deal and or a quote. And if you had the payments feature set up, you could accept payments through your quote. Now with the invoice object, you can simply convert your quote into an invoice directly in HubSpot. Then HubSpot invoices are payable via HubSpot payments, either via ACH or credit card. And the payments can also be marked as paid manually if payment is received outside of HubSpot, say via a wire transfer, a check or PayPal. Now, while you may already see the invoice and payments tool in your HubSpot, they may not be fully unlocked yet. Invoices only allow draft invoices unless you're using the payments tool in congruence with the starter, pro, or enterprise level subscription. So the key to starting to use Commerce Hub features is setting up the payments tool or the Stripe integration. Full disclosure, if you've gained access to the invoice object through using the payments tool, please note that the payments tool is a pay-as-you-go feature. You'll pay a small fee for every payment that you accept with the tool. But this fee is really no different than using a tool like Stripe. One other thing to note as this is being recorded, currently these features are not offered globally, but HubSpot is committed to international expansion in partnership with Stripe. So it's only a matter of time. Okay, we've given the 50,000 foot view. Now it's time to get into the nitty gritty. We'll start with the invoices. So first off, you can find everything you need to generate quality invoices right within HubSpot from templates, auto populated data, and of course, a user friendly interface. Now, how does it all work? Well, you can create invoices two ways. You can manually create an invoice from the contact, company, deal, or quote record, or from the invoices index page. You can also convert a published quote into an invoice. Converting a published quote will, for lack of a better word, copy the quote details into the invoice. You have quite a few options when creating an invoice. You can edit the invoice date and terms, add additional line items, either from the product library or even custom line items. You can add discounts. You can adjust the acceptable payment options. And there's even advanced settings to change the language. 
Once your invoice is created, you can copy the link and send it directly through HubSpot. You can also download it. HubSpot also gives an option to mark the invoice as paid. Now, if your customer pays directly through HubSpot, this will update automatically, but you can mark this manually if they pay through a method outside of the HubSpot payments tool. Then, since invoice payments can be tracked and reported on, you can have better insights into what is overdue or pending. You'll have the full power of HubSpot at your hands to utilize the information. This includes creating a workflow to automate past due notices or collection emails. So lots of options and lots of use cases here. Before we get into the fun of how to use the invoices, you want to be sure that you've assigned a sales hub seat to users who will use that functionality. So let's take a look. First, you need to open the sales hub and click on the invoice object. Note that you can create and see invoices from multiple areas of HubSpot. Once you get into the invoice object, you'll be able to see all of your previous invoice history. There are also some pre-built views at the top that allow you to view the data by overdue, upcoming, and paid. To the right, you can also create your own custom views as well. When you're ready to create the invoice, click the Create Invoice button on the top right. If you haven't already done so, you may get a message about setting up your invoice number. You can do that now or later. Okay, invoice creation. The first step is to add the contact to the in for the, that the invoice is for. If this contact is already associated with the company in your HubSpot, the company should auto-populate in the next step. Next, you'll need to set the invoice terms. By default, the invoice date will be the same day as you're creating the invoice, but you can edit that here. You can also set your invoice terms. Once the invoice date and terms are set, the due date will automatically calculate. As mentioned earlier, this is only one way to create invoices, and in this example, we're starting from scratch. So in starting from scratch, you'll need to add products. If you, however, are creating an invoice from a quote, this step may be completed for you automatically. To add products, click here and scroll through the product list to find the appropriate products to add. You can also add custom line items if applicable. Next, you need to set the quantity of each product. Then you have the option to discount by line item. Now, if we scroll down, you can also add additional line items to the invoice like discounts, fees, and taxes. Let's take a quick look at a discount. You can name your discount and then decide if it'll be a dollar amount or percentage discount. In this example, we're doing a 5% discount, which HubSpot will automatically calculate for you. Towards the bottom of your invoice, there's a section to add comments if needed as well. Now, an important step if you want to accept payment with this invoice is to ensure that the payment option is toggled on. You can also select the payment methods that you'll accept below. Then you can preview and finalize your invoice. Word to the wise, it's worth your time to double check your invoices as they are once they're created, they cannot be edited. After you've finalized your invoice, it's time to send it. You can send it directly from the invoice creation screen, or you can add it to an email later. Now, back to the invoice object. Here you can manage all the invoices. By clicking on an invoice, you'll see all of the important details, and in the Actions tab, you can mark the invoice as paid and even resend it. Please note that while invoices cannot currently be edited, that is a feature that HubSpot's looking to update. Okay, so now you know how to set up the invoices and the options that are available. I want to quickly go on a short tangent of some workflows that could be incredibly effective in aiding with invoice collection and payments. So imagine this, you create an invoice, you have net 30 payment terms, we are at the 30 day mark and no payments been received. What's the process? Is this checked manually? Is there an email template for a payment due reminder? What happens at 45 days? At any point when a customer is pa past due, would you want to red flag their account? The beautiful thing is that these tasks can be automated through HubSpot using HubSpot workflows to automate many of your processes around invoicing, collections, and reminders. Now, we won't go into too much detail here, but at a high level, you could trigger emails after a set number of days. You could also remind someone of an upcoming payment via workflow or send an email thanking them for their payment. As with most HubSpot tools, the fine folks at HubSpot have already created some pre-built workflow templates for you. Just jump into HubSpot, go to the automations, and then workflows, and check out the templates available for payments. So we've looked at invoicing, but the question you might be asking yourself is, well, how is this different than quotes? Well, in full disclosure, they have a lot of the same functionality. 
Where they vary is in the business process that they aim to solve. Technically, you could use a quote to accept payment, but in alignment with business processes, this is typically an invoicing role. So this amazing new tool allows HubSpot to align to the traditional accounting processes. Also, by separating the quoting process and invoicing, you'll have deeper insights into conversion rates and more. All right, let's move on to the second component of Commerce Hub, the payments. HubSpot Payments Tools allows you to accept payments through HubSpot. This platform is powered by Stripe and supports all major credit cards and ACH payments. It utilizes either quotes or payment links to request payment, allowing you to collect one-time and recurring payments. Payment links can be shared directly with your customers via email or chat, or placed directly on your website, landing page, form, meeting link, and more. Some important housekeeping notes. Please note your business or organization must be located in the United States, must have a U.S. bank account, and must be using a paid version of HubSpot. Also, as of now, payments are only allowed in U.S. dollars. Although credit card payments are allowed from your customers located outside of the U.S. as long as they're in USD. A high priority for HubSpot at present is extending this functionality internationally. So stay tuned for more on this. Also, setting up HubSpot payments does require a short approval process from HubSpot and can only be completed by a super admin user. The approval will ask you for sensitive information. This is because payment processing is subject to financial laws and regulations that are aimed at pre preventing money laundering, funding of terrorism, and other illegal activities. To satisfy these regulations, HubSpot and other payment service providers are required to verify basic information about the business entity, its primary owners, and the individual who will serve as the authorized representative for the payments account. Finally, and most importantly, there are additional costs associated with the collection of money through HubSpot payments. However, they are perfectly in line with industry standards. For ACH transactions, you pay 0.5% of the transaction amount, capped at $10. For credit card transactions, a 2.9% fee is applied. These fees are deducted from each transaction when the transaction is made, and in the case of a refund, the fee for the original transaction is not refunded to you. There are some limitations on the allowed size of the transaction, where the max value of an individual transaction is 100 k and you'll be notified via email about your maximum dollar amount per month. So let's address some of the questions we get about payments. Is it secure? Yes, HubSpot Payments Tool is built on Stripe, allowing for secure collection of payment information. Your buyer's payment credentials are also encrypted, and by Stripe ensuring that unauthorized parties do not gain access to sensitive payment information. Is it PCI compliant? Checking another one off here for HubSpot, guys. Yes. In fear of sounding like a broken record, since it's built on the Stripe infrastructure, you get all the benefit of Stripe's, including compliance with payment card industries, data security standards, level one. Now, another one we get. How do I submit my payment fees? Good news, you don't. HubSpot's going to automatically deduct the fees out of each transaction for you. Next question. How do I apply sales tax? Well, HubSpot's working to roll this standard into standard functionality as I record this. According to various posts in the HubSpot community, we could expect a rollout of this as early as Q1 2024. In the meantime, you can add tax as a custom line item. Okay, now let's check it out. First, as I mentioned, you're going to need to set it up. To do this, you need the company tax ID or EIN plus the personal information for anyone who owns at least 25% of the company. You'll also need about 15 to 20 minutes to complete the form to submit for approval. The form will ask for information like, how long has your company been in business? What types of products do you sell? What's the average transaction amount? The total monthly transaction volume? You'll also need to add in bank details. Now you can also take advantage of the options to have different payment policies included with your payment link or you can include a terms of service link as well. A final part of setup would be to jump into your notifications to manage what you get notified about in regards to payments. Now, once you're approved, you need to know how to actually create a payment link. You can create payment links two ways, either from a payment links page or from an individual CRM record. Let's quickly take a look. 
you can go to your sales icon at the top navigation bar, select payments, and then payment links. In the top right corner, click create payment link. You can choose to start from scratch or use an existing template. First, at the top, you can name your link. This is just for internal purposes, but it can be very useful for finding your links later. Also, on the right, you can choose to make the link a one-time link if desired. Next, move down to where you can add the items. You can then choose the products to add to this link. Then you can fill in the quantities and discounts if applicable. There are also more advanced functionalities if you scroll right, like billing start date and the option to delay billing. Then in the summary section, you can add additional discounts on the entire amount, tax, or additional fees like shipping. Before you create your payment link, click on settings to assure all the appropriate options are selected. In here, you can add further instructions, enable the use of discount codes, choose the acceptable payment method, and even decide if a confirmation email should be sent. When you're done, simply click create. This is honestly the long way. You can also create the link directly from the CRM record. Just open the record, find the payments association, and choose from the options to create a new link for this deal. Add an existing link or convert the deal information into a link. All right, your payment link's created. Now you need to send it. You have options here too. You can send the link as part of the quote. You can send it in a chat. You can even embed it in an email. After you click create, you'll see the payment link. All you need to do is copy it and then send it the way that best aligns with your business process. One quick side note as we wrap up payments, HubSpot also allows for Stripe integration. The option available for accepting payments on HubSpot is through Stripe integration, which is compatible with the free version of HubSpot. If you choose to enroll into Stripe integration on HubSpot before December 31st, 2023, you can enjoy the benefit of not having to pay anything for the first 90 days. There is a wait list you can join to get this integration. After the initial 90 day period, the Stripe charges a platform fee of 0.5% on each payment collected. Additionally, Stripe applies standard or negotiated fees on credit card payments and ACH payments. Okay, the last big part of Commerce Hub, subscriptions. For simplicity's sake, a subscription is a recurring payment that follows a schedule. For instance, your cable service is a subscription. You pay the bill monthly. So subscriptions are recurring payments that are associated to the contact, company, deal, and payment rec recorded associated to the transaction. Then on the payment schedule set forth, HubSpot is going to automatically charge the customer using the same payment method as was previously used. HubSpot also allows for payment methods to be changed if needed. Subscriptions will have a status that will give you immediate insights. These statuses are active, unpaid, canceled, expired, and scheduled. You'll also have various actions you can take after a subscription is created. You can edit the payment method. You can edit the date that the subscription payment will be processed. You can enable payment reminders. You also have the ability to edit the subscription details around price, quantity, and discounts. Finally, you can cancel the subscription directly within HubSpot at any time. So now let's really quickly touch on the how-to. The good news is it's super easy and builds on the information you already have. Subscriptions are created from either a quote or an existing payment link. All you need to do is adjust the billing frequency. It's that easy. Then all of your subscriptions can be viewed and managed in the subscriptions index page. Okay, final topic here. Now that you have invoices, you're accepting payments and depending on your business and product, Maybe some or maybe even all of those payments are subscriptions. Now you get to leverage HubSpot to make that data truly meaningful. You can create reports and dashboards to monitor your revenue and forecast upcoming payments. You can also easily track past due payments and look for trends of non-payment. You can even look at smaller things like preferred payment types. The sky's the limit. You open up the world to centralized revenue reporting when you're using Commerce Hub. Now, all that's left is to get started. Please feel free to reach out to onboarding at commercial.com if you have any additional questions. Also, if you liked what you saw here, there's a whole slew of other units available. You can reach out to onboarding to learn more and check out the content on Udemy as well. Thanks for watching and keep learning.